So uh, yeah, welcome. We're we're doing our our second webinar today. It's the same as what we did earlier this morning for uh, Europe. Um, basically, what we're going to be looking at is is effects for the most part. Uh, we found there's a lot in effects, and it seems to take uh, quite a while. Uh, if we do if we get through effects, and we have time, we're going to do a little bit on ex extracts, and uh, like to get some Q and A in there, and then possibly some snapshots. But again, it all depends on time. I'd rather see what what you guys want to see before we, uh, you know, decide we're going to do exactly this or that. So, um, are there donuts and coffee? Sorry, I wish. Well, if if you ran out and got donuts. some for yourself, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If anyone's come in and you haven't uh, hit the registration, uh, please hit that. It just lets us know how many people are here. <clears throat> and then uh, what we're doing is we've been showing a bit of the of the R3 Vista R3 beta. So there are some things that look a little different. Um, again, with the registration form, it allows us to stay in contact with you and let you know when that actually is released. So without further ado, we'll get started here. Um, so something that might look a little different is in R3, the, the soft key toolbar is dockable to the top or bottom of the window. So this is why this might look different for those of you that, look, that were here yesterday. Uh, the, we had it in the, the top. Here I have it docked in the bottom. Gives a little more screen real estate so we can see what's going on. Also, we've got WYSIWYG running off to the side here. And if everything continues to work properly, then we should see what we're doing over there in WYSIWYG, which is handy for effects. So, but just a quick note, Ben, if anybody's got any questions, just type them to everyone in the chat and uh, we'll answer them as we go. Exactly. Yeah, and feel free to put any questions as we go. Uh, don't have to wait till the end. So. So to start off, uh, we're just gonna start with some simple effect stuff. So first off, Vista has a number of built-in effects templates. Uh, these are templates, they're building blocks. They're not every effect you can possibly do in Vista. It's just a few things to get started. Um, I have a couple of other random ones that I've created in here as well. So you can see that you can add on to these. And when using these templates, it's a great way of getting something started. So I grab some fixtures, select an effect template, Let's put them on the singer so we can see what's going on. Uh, and boom, I have got a small circle. And uh, if it's something simple like that, great. Uh, if I want to make some more modifications to that effect, I hit the effects button. And that opens up the smart effects window. So in this window, it gives us access to the parameters of the effect, speed, size, all kinds of things. Uh, so if I want to make this a, I can take a, I can take a previously built template and adjust it to my needs. So I don't have to stick within the range of that template. So in this case, I took that small one and I'm going to crank up the size. I can also adjust things like the different waveforms, squares, lines, circles, uh, and adjust the parameters of how that waveform is going. So if I decided I want that to be more side to side, or let's say I want it to be you know, not quite a, a full just tilt effect, but a little bit of a uh, a pan as it go or as it goes too. I can do that with these. You can also type in the numbers, fifty, and so forth. Uh, in these dialogs along the sides, when it becomes this arrow, I can click and drag and cause it to go up and down as well. So this is working on a template. Let's say I want to just create my own template. So in this case, I'm going to stop this effect first. And what we would do is we would go and select our fixtures. So again, I'm going to take those fixtures and say new effect. This brings up this window. So in this window, we've got different effects types. We're going to go through these one at a time. We're going to start with wave effect. And a wave effect in a position is exactly what we just saw. It's a, I want to say it's a sine wave, but it can be any type of wave. Uh, it's just a continuously moving effect. And then here I can do exactly what I did earlier and adjust these things and look at what, what the effect is doing. The next tab over, and I'm going to just make some adjustments here real quick. We're going to go to that. And we're going to do this. All right. Yeah, it looks good. So the first tab is the position tab. Whenever we create an effect, with a parameter, we're gonna have a tab for that parameter. So in this case, the position, this is the, these are the items I have available in that effect. In every effect, you're gonna have these same next two tabs, sequence and advanced. So in sequence, 
is where we can adjust how that effect runs and how the fixtures interact with each other. Our first parameter here is the overlap. And in overlap, if I take overlap to zero, it means that one, one cycle of the effect, which is an up and down of the fixture, is going to happen at a time. So I'm going to slow this down so we can really see this going. So right now, a single fixture is moving. And when that fixture is done moving, the next fixture moves. If I take it to 50 for 50%, it means that when that fixture starts its move and gets halfway through its cycle, the next one's going to start. And then 100 will take us back to where they're going all over the whole way through. Actually, I'm going to bump this up a little bit too so we can get a little more drastic in our movement. All right. The next option here is stagger. So stagger at zero means that every fixture is going to move together. So now they're all doing the same thing. And if I take it to 50, it means that they're basically splitting the, the, the entire waveform in half. So half the fixture, or all the fixtures are doing half the waveform at any one time. With these two options, working between these two options, you can get some very creative looks out of the effects. Uh, there's no wrong way of doing it. There's, you can, it's, this is very creative. This is your time to be creative with effects. Um, so there's a lot in this window that gets you to uh, some really interesting control over things. The next things down are selection orders. So with running uh, chases or anything else across here, we have our selection order. So right now, our order of how the effect is running is by selection. Our options are ID, which would go by this number here, random, and position. So the Two that are probably most used would be something like random. Now, right now, it didn't show me anything different. I have to hit the preview selection button to show me now what my order is. And if I hit the update, then we know that it's going that way. Preview selection. There we go. Below that is the fan curves and how they're running this way. So if I say from center, it means that the, the effect is going to run from the inside out and outside in or vice versa. This next field, select, select in, in elements individually. Uh, I need a multi-element fixture. I'm going to do that one next. But first, before I do that, I want to go into the blocking and repeats here. So blocking and repeats also have this nice preview below it. It shows you how many fixtures are running in these effects at a time. So if I were to say an effect or a blocking of two, means two fixtures are running at the same time, then the next two and on down the line. If I change the repeat to something like three, it means that every third fixture is doing that. And that's what this preview at the bottom shows. It's ABC, ABC, and on down the line. We can combine those two options. We can also do slashes. So in this case, two slash three in here means that two fixtures do it, then three fixtures do it, then two fixtures do it. Let me go back to that. And last but not least, but we can also do a two and a two and make all kinds of fun things happen. Again, these are things you can play around with, how it's going, and, and see what happens with all that stuff. So I'm going to stop this effect for right now, take that intensity down, and we'll show you what the, the difference between the multi-elements. I'm going to create a wave effect here on intensity. And you can see that now in intensity effect, I've got an intensity tab. And the, the waveforms have changed, or the, the items in that tab have changed a little bit. So right now, I have an intensity effect going across. And I'm doing select elements individually. So if I slow this sucker down, you can see how it's running down the different elements in the fixture. If I change this to group elements together, Vista understands that I want the entire fixture to do the same thing. So now I can have every fixture do it together. However, with the individual, it can make some really interesting effects if you have a fixture that looks like that. So something that can look like you pixel mapped, it can be done with just a couple quick clicks. Oops. See, got to add fixtures first. So. I'm going to first start, and now we're going to look at some swing effects. So the next thing here is our swing effect. A swing effect is 
uh, what would be known in most other as a, as a chase effect. And you get a pop-up that says, when creating a swing effect, you must change the values. Um, and I'll show you this why. So right now, there's a swing effect that I created. It's uh, two colors in white. Yeah, that's not going to do me much. So in this case, I'll select the first one, give it a color, select the next one, and give that a color. So now these effects are going to run between those two colors. Do a snap start. Snap start, make it a little more drastic. And bring the sucker up a little bit more. There we go. So in this window, it starts out when you do a swing effect with just two steps. We can add more steps if we'd like. So if I wanted to make a, a rainbow type effect manually, I could do that there. I could also change the curves of different st steps as we go. Uh, something else to notice is that right now we're running this effect as a per cycle, which means it's running uh, the entire thing in the, in the BPM. Most times if you're tapping out an effect rate, you'd probably want it in, with the per fixture. In this case now, if I tap, it's going to change the colors of each fixture in a tap by that by that rate uh, kind of like sound the light actually you know when you think about that um, so if you're using a tap effect rate you want to use a per fixture cycle on this just to interrupt there ben we had a question yep. in the chat and i wasn't sure what you did because i was doing some other things in the chat question is um selection order will always be saved in the preset does that make any sense to you from what you were demoing just before selection there also a cycle it will say, the selection order will be saved in the template. Yes, we say if we want to save a new template, we'd save the selection order. Uh, selection order will be saved in the effect itself. If I save this effect into a queue, then yes, the selection order will be in there as well. Does that answer the question? I guess it depends. So if you save it as a template and make a new selection, the only thing that will be saved is the to follow your selection order and any blocking and repeats that you've saved in that template. Yes. <laughs> there are lots of options, so it could get it could get a little muddy. Uh, and again, if, if we don't want any of those steps, we can delete them here as well. All right. So these have been creating some effects just from scratch. Uh, before I move on to the next type effect, we're going to do something else here with these effects. I'll show you how to create some more elaborate things directly in the Smart Effects Editor. So let's take some fixtures here again. Mind if I just answer Harrison's question there on the chat, yep. Ben? Sorry to keep Go interrupting. Ahead. So the so the blocking and repeating will be saved into the uh, effect template. For example, Ben, if you go into the sequence tab now and just set some blocking, for example, two. What also has been saved here is that order. So you're saving just a couple up where order selection just above it. You're telling the effect template to save that setting. So if Ben made a completely different selection, but then applied the same template, um, the effect will be running over the new fixture selection. It's just that you've defined it to go over your selection order rather than by ID or something else. Basically, it'll follow your selection to new fixtures if you make it and then click the template. Does that help? Yeah. And if we did it, if we had done something like this and set it by ID, then your selection order wouldn't matter no matter what you did, and you might not get the exact look you're looking for. So I would definitely recommend doing it as selection order uh, if you're saving a, a very specific look. Cool. That's, that's, that's uh, answered the question, Ben. Cool. All right. All right, so I'm going to do a couple things here. So first off, I'm going to make a, a position effect here, and I'm going to go from uh, up. Actually, I did that backwards. I'm going to go from up down to the singer here and turn on some intensity. And now I have uh, the stuff coming in here. We're going to do a snap start, another snap start. All right, so now I have an effect here that I like. And let's say while I'm working on all this stuff, I decide ah, I want to do another effect. Um, I'm going to do a color mix. I'm going to make it a wave effect on this one. And I've got this. And uh, you know, I'm looking at this, and I've been programming. And I, I let's say I like this effect. Uh, I like what it's doing, but I want to adjust the speed of it. However, 
I've created two separate effects here. So if I go to adjust the speed of this effect, uh, I'm only adjusting part of it, so it's going to put the put the the things out of sync. Uh, instead of doing it that way, we can do something different. Where in an effect under the advanced tab, I can add more parameters to the effect. So in this case, right now we have the position parameter. If I hit the plus icon here, I can now add that exact thing I added before. I see the same pop-up window. I'm adding a wave effect, a color mix to this. And now I have two effects running together in the same, I have two parameters running together in the same effect. It adds a second tab here. So I have a position tab and a color mix tab. I could do exactly what I had before. But now when I run this and I increase the rate of the effect, they both increase together. I actually don't know why you'd ever use effect like that. That's pretty crazy looking right there, but hey, you know, it's fun. Again, this is the fun part of effects editor. You can come up with all kinds of fun things. I've um, seen TV show like that. <laughs> oh, geez. Yes, yes, I, ha I have too. Um, so was it in mind? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're making me lose my train of thought. Uh, anyway, so... Doing things like this also allows us to do other types of effects with uh, 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 the fly out type effect. So I'm going to stop this and we're going to start over. We're going to get a little serious here with this one. So we're creating a new effect. I'm going to do, do these both as swings. So first thing is going to be a position. And singer. And then the next one will be up. OK. And we're going to make this snap start, snap start. OK. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add, not that, yes, thank you. I'm going to add a new par new parameter, and I'm going to add another swing, and I'm going to add an intensity parameter to this. So full, and my next parameter is going to be out. Again, snap start, snap start. So now what's happening is every light is turning on and flying down at the same time. You never see when the fixture goes back up because these two are in sync. And again, if I increase the rate, they're gonna stay together the whole way through. Also in the advanced tab here, as you see these waveforms, here I could click and I could adjust these if I needed to. If I wanted it to change just a little bit differently, I could do that. Or if I wanna take it back to where it was, set it back to zero. So this is a way to create those complex looking effects, couple steps. Doing it as a swing effect allows you to make sure those two steps are locked together. You can do this as a waveform effect. Uh, sometimes you have issues getting them to sync up properly to make it look right, but doing it as, a, as a, a step effect is actually a great way of doing it. All right, uh, next I'm gonna get into the, these options down here, but first before I do that, I have to stop this effect. Actually, let, before I do that, let me do one other thing. Uh, let's say I've taken the time to create this effect and I really like it. Now I want to save it as a new template. And I can just by hitting Save New Template. We have two options here. We've got the user library and we've got the show. In the user library, this effect is available for any shows that I start. If it's in the show, it's just in the show. And then that's it. So if I create it as Fly In, I'd say OK. Now down here in my templates, I'm going to have that new effect fly in. And I could take that effect and apply it to my other fixtures if I'd like to. All right. So next up, I want to show you the differences between those base point options. So to do that, first what I'd like to do is I'm going to create a queue list. And in this first queue, I'm going to select these fixtures. I'm going to turn them on. I'm going to create a new effect. And we're going to keep it simple. We're going to make it a wave, do position, and uh, do it an up and down. And I'll keep it a circle. And then put them on the singer. So right now, I'm setting this all up. I, in this queue, this is a bound effect. So this position is now part of this effect. And they're going to keep doing that until they see something else. So I'm gonna create a new queue. In this queue, I'll change the colors. And I'll do one more queue, and I'm gonna send these fixtures to the up position. If I play this back, my first queue, there they are. They're doing their thing. They're changing color. 
and now they're flying out, but they're not they're no longer doing the effect. If I look at this in the timeline, this is what I'll see. I see there's a position event there with the effect, and there's the up event for that that overrides the effect and it's done. Now let's say I didn't want to do that, but I wanted them to keep doing their thing when they go up. So in that case, in this effect, I would change this from bound to free to use as any base point. Now when I play through this, the fixtures are doing their, their thing around that base point. They change their color. And now when they go up, they continue to move. They have a new base point here. So this allows you to have a single effect that's a free effect work from uh, off of information, position information coming from another cue list, coming from your presets. You could be punching through these manually uh, or even other spots in that same cue list. Also in here underneath here is uh, synchronize effects with previous effect on transitions. This is a default that's turned on. It helps your effect when you're going from one effect to another effect to kind of to, to lock up together so that you don't have weird jitters and they start in the same uh, the same part of their 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 cycle. All right, how are we doing? One questions there. Anything in that area before I move uh, on? Yes, we just had uh, a question there. Is how does that uh, auto stopping of the bound work when there's multiple parameters going on? Auto stopping of the bound. Yeah. So um, I would. I'd imagine that the um, auto stop just happens on that feature and any other feature will continue to run in terms of extract events until it sees a new event for that. But I will just check that for you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so if you have multiple features in the same effect, mm -hmm. does that change all of them? Yeah, I would assume that that's what it does too. But yes, you're right. I'll just we'll check, check that. that. You carry on. I'll check yeah. that out. Yep. All right. Save release. Let me get rid of that one. Okay, so next up, some of the new things in, in Vista 3, uh, they've been out for a little bit now, are the effects masters. So effects masters are, are a new component that allows you to assign uh, multiple effects to the same, same master. An effects master is a component in itself. So it's something a little bit above everything else. It's, it, it, components are considered groups and presets and all these items. We have a new one here called effects masters. And there are a number, there are, in default installation, there will only be two. Uh, if you want to create a new one, and you can create pretty much as many as you'd like, you right click in the effects masters component window here and say create new effects masters. And let's just say I'm going to call this Ben. Now this effects master is a generic master. It can be whatever we want it to be, size or speed. It doesn't have a definition at this point. So if I have an effect here, of something going on, here's where I can assign it as to what master it's going to be. So my master is agnostic, and it's going to be Ben. I can either make it a rate master or a size master. So in this case, I've made it a rate master. And now if I were to, I'm going to I'm just going to uh, add a different console so we can see what's going on here a little easier without it taking up every space. I'm going to drop the effects master. So when we have an effects master, that's how we assign it to a playback on a console. We have to drag and drop it like anything else. So I take this off of here, over here. Just make this guy a little smaller. So now at this master, I can control the speed of this effect. Now, any effects can be assigned to any master. So I can have multiple effects that are assigned to the same master and they'd all run together. Uh, not necessarily, you, you wouldn't necessarily need to have them all running. This effects master is gonna control them all in the background. And let me go back here. It's gonna get just so I can have just that one in here, not see anything else. Uh, something we're going to look at here, in this new R3 beta, we have some new uh, uh, options. 
So in our components, underneath our components, we have our fader options and whatnot. Uh, the effects faders can be set to different things. So this effects master can be set, the fader can be set to a rate or size, or also the combined rate and size by dragging and dropping. And in R3, we have some new functions here for our tap buttons. Uh, these are actually fairly new, so they're still being kind of tested out a little bit. We have things where it's double rate and temporary double rate. So when I have a tap button, and I want to slow an effect down, actually, I need to change some stuff here first before I do that. Let's change this to per fixture. Hey, that's better. Now I can see my effect changing. Let me bump this up. And also, actually, yeah, that looks fine. So in my effects master, I have, or in these, I have these other button functions. So if I wanted to do a double rate, I could tap it and you can see the rate increases and increases as I go. Uh, we also have the reset to tap rate. So if I had a reset to tap rate on down here, it would take me back to wherever I tapped last. We also have something called the temporary double rate, which increases the rate when I hold the button. So now for the people that like to run this live and busk it, they can, they can have a lot more options on there on how they do these things. All right, let's see. Uh, I think that's, that's a good bit there in effects. How are we doing on time? We're good, we're halfway through. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna set up here for another little, another new thing that's in this R3 beta here. Oh, actually, let's let's move on to the other effect type. So, in the uh, in the effects window, we've got the other effects types, which is the uh, video effect. A video effect works on a matrix. So, before I get into how we do that, I should probably explain a little bit about matrix itself. So, in Vista, we have what's called the the matrix, a matrix, and a matrix is a physical representation of your fixtures in space. Uh, we can take fixtures and add them into the matrix, and then when we run effect across them, they show up uh, in 3D space. So right here, we have a, a matrix in the back of this stage, and if I select this matrix, I can go through and I can add an effect, a different type of effect, like a, a, uh, a video effect to it. So here's a couple templates, and that's what it would look like in this area. To create a matrix in Vista, it's quite simple. We right click in here and we say matrix and create matrix. It's gonna ask you for a size. You can put a size in there if you choose or you don't necessarily need to. If I say, okay, that's fine. I'm now here and the matrix is right there and I can use this box in the corner to rescale it as needed. So if I wanted it larger and smaller, I can drag and drop, drag it out. And then put fixtures in and I drag it and drop them into the matrix. In the interest of time, because the matrix does can take a little time to set up, uh, we have one already made, pre-made, so we're gonna play with this one first. So when I have a matrix set up here, and I do the new effect, I can add a video effect in here. I can actually add different types of effects to the matrix. Uh, I can add a wave. I can add, uh, when I do something like intensity, I'll see a new, some new stuff show up in the sequences, these waves back and forth across here. And with these, I could do some stuff and do some rotations on those waves. So you can get a lot more interesting going on, interesting effects going on with that. I can also add in video effect is where we'd go if we want to add an animated uh, GIF file to it. So when we do a new effect, it's going to ask you for this information. I want to make sure I have something. I have dancing banana. I'll say. It's, it's not showing up in my preview here, unfortunately. Dancing Banana is a fun one. Uh, and actually, I, bring, I show this because we have this, this fire one. I found that a lot of users like to use the fire effect, the, the fire gifts for actual effects use. 
Uh, it's very handy to use that on a row of fixtures that are shiny on a site or behind a window because it does have a little more uh, organic flow to it rather than doing a, a, a pre-built effect. So in this case, I'm going to just skip over. I'm going to go to my other effect, which appears that it might not be working properly. So in that case, we go back to the fire because that does look like that's there. And I got to turn on some intensity. So when we have the, the animated GIF file going, we have got these bounding boxes. This lets us scale as to what the actual matrix is seen. So this is the output here view here. So for something like this, I can take it down and give it some flicker. I know it's kind of hard to read on, on WYSIWYG. I've had to dumb it down so I can run all this on one machine. But this kind of shows you the basics of how to do this. And you can use pretty much any GIF file that you can find online or GIF file, however people like to say that. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to get rid of some stuff. And we're going to start again on this because I want to show you a different type of effect. I'll show you ways of the new options. So we're going to go back in, create a wave effect, do intensity, sequence it, do it to this. And we're going to do square so it's a little more drastic. And uh, drop this a little bit here. Got to find that nice little balance of, of where it works. All right, so one of the new options in this R3 release is the, uh, or will be in the R3 release, is this new cycles count, where we can set amount of times that an effect is running. So it can run infinitely, we can have it multiple cycles. So this is our way of making one shot effects. So now if I set it up to just run once, When I play through it, it just runs the one time down there. And it went a little slow. I want to speed that up a little bit. Let's see what it does now. There we go. So now we have our one shot effect. So we can make that effect do its single cycle and then stop and then wait for us to do it again. So something else new and fun to look forward to. Any questions on that? We good there? Uh, yeah, we're good, I think. <laughs> All right. You still with me, Jack? Is he still there? I'm just trying to answer a question about um, multiple matrices. So you can have multiple matrices in a single layout, but they have to contain different fixtures because a fixture can only be in a layout once. So therefore, if you want to have a single fixture in multiple matrices, you just have to create multiple layouts. So you can put that fixture in, in different matrices. Yep. And there really isn't a limit to that add more layouts. I mean, it's at some point you might have too many layouts that you can't keep things straight, but it's totally possible. All right. Uh, effects. Is there anything else I need to add for effects? Is there anyone... uh, we just had a question. Is controlling effect speed easier with BPM or the intensity rate drop down? Did you just show a rate drop down somewhere? Oh, uh, this, this rate drop down here, I assume. Uh, if, if so, that is actually beats per minute that rate is the anytime you see a rate in vista is actually beats per minute yes cool yeah we're good okay awesome all right so uh we'll move on to some ex extracts here <clears throat> let me go back to this guy here and we'll change one of our drop downs News to extracts. Hey, look, there's an extract called Jack in here. <laughs> uh, I've used this show file a file lot. Uh, so an extract in Vista is uh, I explain it as it's a it's a it's a preset on steroids. Uh, it's a preset involving timing information as well, so to speak. Uh, it's the simplest way that I found it to explain what it will do. Uh, so and when you use a preset in Vista. All I'm getting is just this color. If I were to look at this preset and open it and edit it, I would see it's going to show it to me in the timeline, but there's no way of it's, it's just a thing. It's just showing me what it is. An extract, on the other hand, will take any timing information that's involved with this. 
So to create an extract, I can do something where I have it, let's say I have a new queue list and I take these fixtures, I turn them on, I'm going to put them on the singer and uh, yeah, that's all cool. And I'm gonna create a new queue and turn them to green because green looks awesome on stage. Um, and then I'm going to do another queue, oops, do another queue, take them up take them off the same time. And I like that. So in this case, I could take these, these items, take those three cues, right click and create new extract. <clears throat> and as I do that, it's gonna ask me, what do I wanna, what do I wanna create? So I'm gonna take the selected cues from those fixtures. I'm gonna create an extract on these parameters. So intensity, uh, position and color. And I'm gonna say, okay. And now I have an extract in here. I can take this extract and I can apply, apply it to other fixtures. And in fact, before I do that, I'm gonna close this out, save and release. Because what this also lets me do is not only can I apply it in a queue list to other fixtures, but I can also apply it in live. So in this case, I've created basically a three-step little sequence here that plays when I hit that extract. So the fixtures come on, they go to the green, and they go out. I can apply it to other types of fixtures at the same time. In this case, these are color wheel fixtures, so they snap to the color and then they go out. If I were to edit this one and look at it, I'd see it's actually showing three different cues and it's showing all that information. So there's a lot more to it. It's, it's quite interesting to, to, to get in there. So it's handy to use as a building block of, of your cues or of looks. Uh, it can be very powerful for all different ways of playing back. You can actually take two different fixtures and apply the extracts, like create an extract on two different fixtures. Then when you apply it to everything, it repeats itself all down the line. Let me go back to the key list that I had going on where I created all this. Now I'll go back to what I was saying about when I apply an extract in a queue list. When I apply the extract in a queue list, I'm given the option to insert or merge the extract. If I were to insert it, it basically creates me three more queues that do the exact same things. Uh, just to stop you there, Ben, just a quick question. Can you show how you expanded that extract again? Did you save the queue oh. list or did the queue list get saved in the extract? So when, you, when I edit the extract, that's when it shows the three cues that were part of that extract. Is this what? I'm not sure because I wasn't following you. I was answering some chat, but I'd, okay. I would imagine it's just how you, um, how you yep. got the extract to apply in the original cue list again. So this is, this is how I can edit the extract by, by right clicking on it and saying edit. Then it will open it up in the, in the editor and it shows it as three different cues because that's what it's, the information it's doing. When I want to take an extract like this and apply it to itself in a cue list, I select the second batch of fixtures and I apply the extract again by clicking on it in the quick picker. And then it asks me, how do I want to, uh, how do I want to insert, put the extract? I want to insert it or merge it into the queue list. And if I insert it, it's just going to plug in those three new queues. Did you apply the extract in live as a demonstration a minute ago, Ben? I did. I, did. I applied that okay. in live as so well. One of the questions in the chat is, uh, in the extract, why did they show us halts? Um, that's simply because they were recorded as that from the original queue source. But when you play an extract back in the programmer, because there's no queues in the programmer, they all play back on top of each other, which is why you get them auto-following. But if you apply the extract within a queue list, you'll get the original halts back in there when you uh, insert or merge that extract back into a list. There we go. Yeah, so even in, in live, when I look at the extract and what it does, if I look at live in the timeline, I'm going to see all those events in time, but they're not as cues since the, the live tab does not contain any cues. So I can see this timing here without any, any cue breaks, so to speak. All right. that usually when I do extracts, that's when people get lost. So I'm kind of waiting to make sure everyone, if there's anything that 
any other questions on that before I uh, move on to something else? Yep, we're good. Okay. Hi, on. So, uh, Harrison's saying he's confused. Uh, <laughs> yep. About saying that you don't need to save the queue list. Uh, you do need to save the queue list. An extract is just like a clipboard of complex programming and queue timings that you might want to use again and again on different fixtures later on in this queue list or indeed live. Yeah, so for example, I didn't save that queue list at all. I got rid of it, discarded it. I still have the extract because I created something different. If I were to open up a new queue list and then apply that extract to the new queue list, say this one, again, it's going to put in those queues. And if I play through this, all this stuff will still be here. Uh, so to answer Andrew's question there, that's the primary use of an extract. Ben's pro program some complex queue timings on some fixtures and then just by adding new queues and selecting different fixtures Vista is able to automatically do those complex programming on those fixtures without you having to spend time doing all of those times again and on the extract application when you insert the extract it adds new queues at the end of where you're currently working. And if you merge the extract, it will add the first queue into the current queue and then add the subsequent ones after that. So here what I did, I just took these, that same extract, take it to queue two, merged it in. So now I basically have all these fixtures doing the same thing through, the, through there. And the beauty about extract, I know it seems like extract, If well, if I'm going to do this, why don't I just copy and paste the cues? Um, that's fine if I have the exact same fixtures I'm going to reuse over and over again. And extract, though, is, is fixture agnostic. So I can apply this extract to any fixture that can do it. So in this case here, you know, something completely different from what I've done, I can merge this in, create some more cues here. And that same look of the fixtures come on, they change this the position and the color is all placed on those same fixtures on those fixtures so that's kind of the difference between when you're using an extract in a queue that's kind of the difference on that now where the power of extracts really is 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 in the fact that you can use an extract and from live and make things happen that way so uh, you know i can i could create a complex look uh, of something i like to see and do an extract of that and play it back at any time during my show so that's kind of where uh, extracts can be very helpful. One thing to remember is when you have it, when you're running an extract in live, it's obviously capturing the, the fixtures in the programmer. So they are always, they are still going to be there. So uh, like what we said yesterday, uh, your live, your programmer is higher priority than your queue list. So if you went and did something like this, I've now turned these lights off in live. So in any other queue list I was running, uh, this would override it. So it's something to remember on using that. But if you pay attention to that type of thing and you you got everything going, then um, it can be quite powerful. We still. I'm just checking your chat, make sure there's nothing else. Quite, quite a lot of questions there. You can't do an extract like a chase. Um, you'd be better off just using original queue and turning that into a chase or use an effect. That's better. Um, and R3, no release date as yet, but it's currently in a private beta, which will then hopefully move on to a public beta soon. So uh, it's almost ready. Uh, but with all software development, we never say a, a exact date because we never know what's going to happen. We always make sure that the software is 100% stable and an improvement on what we already have uh, before we release it. Yes. All right, so uh, next thing we have, we can go into, we can kind of open this up for any other questions, any uh, questions, we can also go into uh, snapshots or some inserted commands. Uh, last session we did inserted commands because uh, that's fairly simple and fairly quick to go through. Uh, and in fact, that might not be a bad idea because there are some new things in the commands. Uh, uh, some people in the chat would prefer snapshots, snapshots, snapshots seems to oh, be okay. oh, consensus oh, for these three people there. Di different from last time. We were all about the inserted commands. That's okay, because we've got different content on the videos that we uploaded, so it's cool. Perfect. 
All right. So let's go over here and just pop in here and take a look at some stuff. So in Vista 3 snapshots, in the past, a snapshot in Vista 2 was basically just taking a shot of what page your console was on and what was playing at that time. So uh, it was fairly limited. Uh, snapshots in Vista 3 have been uh, fleshed out quite a bit more. There's a lot more to them as to what they can do. Uh, they are also a component, just like anything else. So if I have a snapshot of something, I would take it and drag it, drop it on a, on a playback. Or if I were to take a playback and split it, I could drag it, put a snapshot on part of a playback so it's just a single button that applies it. To create a snapshot in Vista 3, we right click in here. Uh, there's multiple ways of creating a snapshot. Uh, the straightforward one right here is to right click in the snapshots window and say create new sla snapshot. We can also do it from the components drop down here as well. And this is a great way of doing it because snapshots can now also remember our window positions and where things are in space. So if I were to take a snapshot and try to do that from here, it wouldn't help me much because I'd be back on this window. So in, this, in those situations, going to your screen you want to be in and doing the new snapshot is a great way of doing it. So now we can see the options that are happening in snapshots. So we can record our playback state, our fader levels, effects masters. Uh, those are the ones, well, except for effects masters. These were in the existing. Console workspace is going to say where, what the console is doing at this time. The new, other new ones are window workspaces and live timing. There's also a really handy new one here called clear, clear live programmer when applied. I really like this one for creating a home default screen snapshot, which would clear programmer and set everything back to where it is. Uh, a great example of this is, you know, in the volunteer, in the churches, house of worship, and the volunteers. Um, if you have someone come in and they, you know, someone else has come along and, and moved everything around on the screen or changed layouts and did this and that, and they really don't know what they're supposed to be doing, uh, or the other great one is, you know, when someone grabs fixtures and sends them to zero and they're captured in live and no one knows what happened, why don't the lights come on? Uh, it's nice to have a snapshot like this where I call it home. I say it's going to save my window workspace. It's going to clear live when it applied. Say OK. And then on something like the MV console, I would do exactly this. Split the playbacks. Put this home snapshot on that playback. So now... I tell the people, hey, when you come in, if things look weird, hit your home snapshot, and it's going to move everything back for you. And it's going to take you right back to where, you, where you're going. Now, it's important to note that this is with a physical MV console in front of you, so you're not losing it when, it go, when you do that. So, yeah, so if I had fixtures and I had them turned on, and then I go to this snapshot, they, it clears the live, we're back to normal, and uh, everyone's happy. So it's a great way of, of creating a, a a default place to go. Uh, obviously, you can create different window layouts, and everybody coming in could have their own snapshot. Some of the th other things that snapshots will do is is recording uh, your live time and your your FX masters and things like that. So, in some of these other snapshots, in fact, I'm not gonna I'm just gonna go back to some of these. These snapshots here have different live times in them. which is our time down here in this window. So if we're busking and we want to change that time, if I hit these snapshots for these different times, they will change what those do as well. And actually, there must be more information. Or did I hit the wrong one? I hit the wrong one. Ha, ah, there we go. So now I'm changing my time here in a five seconds. So I can line these up across the top. So as I'm running through my show, Can't find a good spot to put this, so I don't block everything. There we go. So with our live time, anything I'm doing in here is happening in that two-second fade right now, or the five-second fade, whichever one I pick that way. So your snapshots can help you with a lot of busking as well. Uh, just a question for defining uh, busking. It might be a a term that's just lost in uh, translation. Busking typically certainly uh, 
in the UK is a term just for when you're working on the fly, working live, perhaps with a live band, you haven't had any time to do any pre-programming. So you're working with perhaps some templates or some cues that you've given yourself as building blocks to produce that show, not knowing what's coming up next. So just working live with the console, uh, not knowing what's happening. Yeah, basically doing exactly what we're doing right here, uh, but in a live setting in front of the band, you know, as you go, listening to the music, watching what happens. It doesn't have to be music. It could be anything. It could be even corporate event. Um, yeah, everything here is, is this would be considered, you know, the busking aspect of things. Um, and actually, working off of that, something that's completely off of what we've been discussing already, Jack, um, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go way out here and before you go there, just to question yeah. someone had yeah. in relation to lifetime. Can you put lifetime on a fader? You can, and by default, lifetime is on the the super playback faders of uh, the EX and the S1 and S3 consoles. Actually, is it still on the default? It, Don't remember now. It is. It it's is. Also, okay. It's also in your um, fader action as well. If you've yeah. Got so. If you have a console like this, this is your live time fader. So it goes between the maximum time set and the least amount of time set. So yeah, so if you have, and personally, if I'm using live time, I prefer on a fader. If I'm busking, I prefer the fader because I like to slam faders up and down a lot uh, rather than using the snapshots. But everyone has a different way of, of running things, so you have lots of options. You're good to go into whatever you're going to say now. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is going to be a surprise for you because I, you know, I just thought of this. Uh, we're talking about busking, and also in, in, you know, in even in um, house of worship, even corporate events. Uh, there's a function in here that's been in here for a while, and I think it's it's one of those underrated things that people don't know about, and it's the stealth mode. Um, I really, I, I like to bring it up because, I, again, it can be really handy. It's like working in blind. Um, and no one really knows it exists. So what stealth does is it will lock the output of what you're doing in here right now and let you do something else. So if I have these lights on, and actually I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do this legitimately, um, set them to the singer again, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna make a color change, but let's say the singer here is doing we're between songs. The singer is going on and on and on. He's talking to the audience about something. I know what I want to do next, but I don't really want to sit here and wait for him to do it and then set it all up. I can hit stealth. And right now that output is locked and I can decide I'm going to change those to green. And also I'm going to kick them up and uh, actually I'm going to do the audience instead. So when I'm done, I have set up a couple different things. I mean, I could even go to strobe, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I've done a couple different things, but nothing's happening until I tell it to go. So I can say at this point when he's done rambling on and say go, and it's going to go do all those things. And it's going to do it over that live time, which is why it all snapped. Uh, I can also do something else. And, or if, if I, let's say I do all that, uh, go back down here, take those back to blue. Um, so we're in this spot. And we're in stealth and we decide, all right, we're going to do that and we're going to do that and we're going to do all that stuff. And then something else happens or we go somewhere else and we decide not to do that. I can hit cancel. That, look, that all goes away and I'm right back to where I was. So stealth is something that can be very handy. It also has a button on the consoles, on the EX consoles. This button right here is our stealth button. So when you have an EX console, you can in it, get in and out of that pretty quickly as well. We just actually had that question in the chat. So it's it's there on the EX, but in, you can't assign it to a playback button because it's not it's not a component function. But you can change your function key, uh, soft key. So F1 to F12, you can assign it there, and by default, it's on F9. Yes. And for assigning any of these keys to anything, uh, with the, the soft keys uh, work in exchange with the modifier keys to the shift, the control, alt, option on max. Um, if I wanted to assign something to one of these, I would hold it down and I'd right click. Let me find an empty spot here. If I right click on a soft key, it pops up this menu and here's where I can add. Any of these functions can be added to a soft key. So you can see that there are a lot of things, a lot of spots that are empty right now. 
uh, on the last layer. You can add things and you can overwrite anything else that's already on here. So let's say um, you don't want operators to have access to highlight. Highlight could be dangerous. Um, turn on something and it stays on. If I right click on it, I can change it to anything else as well. All right, well, uh, that, yeah, we could go into commands. Uh, before we move on, just a question about what happens if you clear the live, uh, live tab in stealth. You're still clearing stuff out of there, um, but you're just setting up that clear. So you won't actually see that go to stage until you press stealth go. So it's just a way to set up. It doesn't clear stuff immediately. You're doing that uh, blind still. It's a stealth clear. Yeah, right. Um, in for in to translate it into other console like etc, it'd be kind of similar to using the sneak function on an etc console. Uh, I'm not setting up my time is being set up by down here, but it's the same sort of idea is I'm sneaking something in and out or sneaking a change. So. So I'm just going to open this up to any other que to questions at this point. And if, if we want to go into commands, inserting commands, we can do that. Uh, it's, that's fairly straightforward for the most part. So uh, I'd like to see what else people would like to see. Uh, there was a quick one for commands and moving black. Um, ben, you've got five, 10 minutes or so. Um, we're probably going to cover moving black in a, in a, in a future webinar uh, with some other topics, uh, most possibly. Yeah, moving black can be a little bit more elaborate. I'm afraid we'd get a little too far into it. All right. So inserting commands. Uh, we can insert commands into QList. And what this allows us to do is, is do other functions. Similar to a macro, uh, we can stack multiple commands in it. So under our tools menu is we have the insert command function. And in the insert command window, these are the things we can do. So we can set up an action where we play another cue list. We go back, skip forward, assert, release. Uh, some of the, the, the handy ones here are things like release all except. What this would do is this command placed in the first queue of a queue list would release everybody else except for that queue list. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the target. So releasing all except. So by default, it wants you to say this queue list because it doesn't want to release itself. Uh, but what this allows is for, for people that run uh, a song on a queue list, they can have that queue list when it starts, make sure that nothing else is running. So some of the new ones that have been added in are MIDI control enable. And this new one loads super playbacks. This allows us to take a list and automatically load it onto the playback section of the console. So if you like to use this super playback to run your shows versus running off of individual playbacks, and in the past you'd have to go in here and you have to select, select your cue list and then load them in and, and, and vice versa. And now we have a command to do that directly in the timeline in a queue to do that type of thing. And also we can push the select button on things as well. So to insert a command, I'm just gonna insert a basic play command. And I'm gonna say it's the looks command. I'm going to play the looks cue list. If I say insert, it gives me a pop-up says, hey, I've inserted this. The window stays open for you automatically. This is in case you want to add more commands because I can add multiple commands to this. So I'm also going to add a, uh, I'll add a flash command because I don't know if it will do anything. Insert, okay. And just to do that, to sh add a couple commands, I'm going to look at it in the timeline. So now we have these two commands have been added in the timeline. These events can be adjusted like any other event. So I can actually put this command to happen in a certain amount of time. So when I play this cue list, it played my looks command and then it would flash uh, whatever's on list 12 the same after that. If I don't like the command, I can delete it, select it and delete it. And we, like I said, we can continue to stack more and more commands in here depending on what you want to do. So you could create a queue list that's nothing but commands that fires other queue lists, does this, does that, does all kinds of fun stuff uh, pretty easily. Also commands that, that change your snapshots. So 
Uh, another example that I've seen happen is uh, we'll have a cue list that has a snapshot in it. So at the end of the song, the snapshot's triggered and automatically reformats or, or moves everything around on the console or changes it to set it up for the next song. So um, lots of power in inserting commands. And it's simple and easy to explain, actually, too. Unless there are questions. Uh, last question, or what questions come in. What's the difference between a normal playback and a super playback? Oh, OK. Uh, physically, it's just where they are. A normal playback can do everything super playback can do, and vice versa. The super playback is the pair that has the screen. So on an EX console, it's this area. Uh, on an S3, this is considered the super playback. So it's an area that if I loaded a, a loaded something to it, so if I go to menu and hit the playback button, now I have, if there's a cue list in here and I have it selected, I can uh, control it with that pair. So I'm gonna go old school with this with the S3. Uh, so this, this super playback is loaded with these. When you're on the super playback, you have some adjustments. I could turn these, these encoders to do things like shuttle. Let me kick this back over to here. So in this case, I could take this, and if I turned on shuttle on this, I could run through the queue. And I don't know if I can do this without the, yeah, I can't do this without the actual encoder in front of me. I don't have a hardware one on here. Versus on the S3, you could actually do this with the, with the encoders. Um, but here in this case, I'm going shuttle around, so I'm actually rotating and scrolling through my queues. So a couple things that Super Playback can do that's a little, that's a little more advanced. Um, and also it gives you access to these play buttons down here. So if I have a single play button to run everything, like the large one on the EX, and I'm running through Super Playback, it's the big, the big play button, easy for the volunteers to see, easy for the, the, just the console op to run, if you're, especially if you're in a theater show and you just go on a single queue list. Uh, however, with that new command in there of loading queue list to Super Playbacks, you could still easily have multiple queue lists in a theatrical style show and insert the command to load the next queue list in the Super Playback and never have to leave this spot right here. And it would do it all for you. Very handy. Yeah. All right. Questions? I take command out of a queue. Oh, just click, just select it and delete it. Love the big play button. Yes, the big play button definitely is uh, is handy. Um, I think we're pretty much there, but I think. And, and there's only one play button, unlike the uh, old Express consoles where, oh no, you hit the play on the wrong playback. Oh. <laughs> uh, one more stealth question. Yeah, go ahead. The clear button stealth and the clear on live. Yeah, you should see it hopefully here in the rig if you give it a go. I can see I can see why it would look why it doesn't why it would we look weird and not jive. Uh, because I when I have something captured and I go to stealth and then I hit this clear, uh, the clear goes away, but it's so still if, happening. So if, you, if you make a blue look, for example, there, Ben, just go blue. So if yep. Ben changes his mind and presses the clear button, he's only cleared this uh, temporary look that he's uh, working on right now. Yeah. So it's, it's important to think, though, too, that when I hit stealth, whatever's happening before I hit stealth has basically been locked. I've captured it and locked it. So nothing I do with this from here is happening until I either say go or cancel. So um, yeah, so even hitting clear here, or if I hit clear down here, I'm only clearing what I'm doing in this in this stealth mode. So I, I do see how it can be a little disorienting when when this is showing that I'm doing something over here. Um, however, it's it's not, it's just doing what's in stealth. So stealth is basically holding that value and closing it out, keeping it going. Which bit do you mean there, Brandon?
fixture. Oh yeah, okay. The fixture editor built into Vista. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, fixture editor hasn't changed. It's still it's still always where it was. Uh, you can even in the past you could access it through the patch menu. So fixture editor is available to add, to to load from here or it's a separate application. Uh, I think we recommend doing it from Vista. Uh, it tends to work better. Uh, things in Stealth, no, Stealth is only being run in Live. It's it's just a, it's like a blind look of Live. So uh, when I'm doing something in Stealth, I'm not going to try to save it for later. Uh, that's, I'd have to look at that. I don't know if it'd be possible to do something like that, actually. What was the question? Uh, saving something you did in Stealth. I haven't tried doing a you store can, all in stealth. You, yeah, you could save it as a queue. Store all wouldn't work, but you could do store part and take that as the source and, and pop it somewhere else if you didn't want to store it to a queue. Um, While you're still in stealth. Yeah, it's a source, right? It's a blind okay. mode. I haven't tried that. I'm you can gonna... do blind update, blind update preset, blind update. It's the same thing. Yeah, okay. Um, and just to answer a few questions about uh, future console development, uh, of course, at Vista by Chroma Q, we are committed to uh, developing uh, the Vista range, both in software and hardware. So we're busy working on that behind the scenes, but um, we don't know any timeframes on anything. Uh, but you guys, of course, would be the first to know, uh, but we don't know anything just yet. But we do... Uh, Listen, as I'm sure you're all aware, so the all the plus ones for uh, things like motorized faders, uh, we do take into consideration. If you throw the... All right. Now I'm curious about that one. Wait, let's see. I'm going to try to duplicate that where you said there, Josh. Uh, throw levels to full and then still set them to 50. That's an interesting one. They show that they're 50 here and hit clear. Well, that's correct because that's what they are. I'm clearing what I did in stealth. I'm not clearing what I did in live. And if I set them the, ah, I see where you're going with that. Uh, oh, oh yeah, okay. So what I've done, and this is, I've cleared it in live. Okay, let me back this up. Let's just get it because this is actually working the way it's supposed to work with what, what has been done. So I have fixtures in full. I go into stealth. I set them to 50. And if I hit clear, I'm actually adding the clear to party. my stealth. So when I go from that, they would go to clear. Um, so actually, instead of going to clear, you'd actually want to say cancel on stealth rather than clear. So even if I have fixtures at full, go to stealth and only hit clear and say go. I've basically queued up clear to happen as soon as I come out of stealth. So it is working the way it's supposed to work. If, if you wanted to do something where you decided you changed your mind, uh, which is, I think is where you're going with that example. Uh, instead of hitting go, you'd hit cancel. And now we're back to where they were. One last question, Ben. I think the very last question was have overrun slightly. Can you just sure. um, put them in a position and show us how we can park an individual uh, parameter such as pan or tilt or cyan or something? Yeah, so if we kick the fixtures in there, uh, if we want to park a fixture, uh, you'd right click on that and give it the option to park right here. So park and unpark. So what this is going to do though at this point is it's going to lock everything that that fixture is doing right now at that spot. So even though it shows that it's not, that fixture's on and it's stuck right there. Uh, if you want to park individual parameters, probably transforms is the way to go with that. No, it's right. You can right click the raw DMX tab, for example, just just uh, park. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Till. I uh, I've never actually done that. I've never had a need to do that as well. See, I learned even I learned something new every time. Yep, so let's say I do that, and then I want to park that one and park the color, and I've parked on all of them right now. If I unpark them and then just say it's just this one and park that color. And now I've parked those, that parameter to that spot, so I turn them back on and 
boom, there they are. Yeah, I've actually never had a need to do that exact thing. So it's good to know. You can go one bit step further as well. If you right click the square raw DMX tab in the individual feature, for example, if you go into color and click on um, right click there and park that, you're just parking the cyan channel. So you can really go quite detailed if you need to as well. Yeah. Um, loads of settings. Oh, yeah. We, that we definitely run out of time. Uh, yes. Painting settings for busing scenarios. I think more than likely we'll be doing a, a, a webinar on kind of more sort of busking uh, tips and curious properties and how to do temp faders and that type of stuff. As we've mentioned in the previous webinars, the previous few days, these are pretty new to us, uh, but the feedback's been good. So hopefully we can uh, do some more and maybe get some polls going on on the sort of content you guys want to want to see. Yeah, and again, if you have anything else, uh, you know, feel free to, especially you know, uh, feature suggestions, emails, shoot in this email, uh, and fill out the uh, the registration form there, so we can be in the loop. So we have your information, and you know, for everyone excited for R three, uh, you'll be ready to go. Uh, yes, these are recorded too, and we're exploring how we can put them up on on the website or on the forum or something like that. So. Yeah, with that, um, great. Thank you, everybody, and uh, stay tuned for uh, next time.